Hello, I'm Brandon, and today I'm going to show you how to change your oil on your Lexus IM. I mean your Lexus Prius. I mean your Lexus CT200. What's up everybody, it's Brandon with Extreme Daily Drivers where we are always balling on a budget and wrenching our garage. And today, if you can't tell already, we're not really balling on a budget. Today we're in my wife's Lexus CT200 and we're going to change the oil. So I know a lot of you are watching this video wondering am I really going to do a video on how to change your oil? It's the simplest thing to do and the answer to that question is yes for two reasons. One, for whatever reason, there are barely any videos on how to change your oil on a Lexus CT200. I don't know why that is, but there are barely any videos on how to do it. And it is a little different than other cars. And number two is that this channel is all about people getting their hands dirty for the first time. Many of the stuff that I do, I've never done before. So I want people to get confident on working on their car and what better way to gain confidence than doing something as simple as an oil change. So that's why I wanted to make this video. If you've changed your oil a million times, it's going to be boring for you. But if you're someone who's never done it before, it could be interesting and you might learn something. So let's get started. So the first step of changing your oil is figuring out whether or not you really need to have it changed. In these new cars these days, you don't have to worry about how many miles it's been since the last oil change because the car will tell you itself. So in this car, let me show you what happens. In this car, a little notice pops up that says maintenance required. Now that could mean a hundred million things and I think that Lexus wants to do it and be vague like that on purpose so you bring it into the dealer, but we're not bringing anything to a dealer here. We're gonna fix it ourselves. And I know it's gonna be the oil change because it's been about 5,000 miles since the last one. I'm the one who did it. So I remember it's pretty much been close to four or five months. So um, we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood and start draining this oil. The first thing you wanna do when you change your oil is obviously get it up in the air. If you have a set of ramps like I do, use them because they're the easiest way to get and the safest way to get the car off the ground. These ramps are awesome because there's no way for them to break. It's just wood stacked on top of wood with some screws in it. I got the idea from Project Car Magazine or Sport Compact Car. I can't remember which magazine it was, but it was one of those two. So before you even start thinking about draining your oil, you need to make sure you have oil to put back in. And you need to know what kind of oil to get and what weight to get. Oil comes with all different weights, but your car needs a very specific weight based on what the manufacturer recommends. The easiest way to find that out is to check out your oil cap. So, on the old Lexus, we got our oil cap here, and that's what we need. OW20. So once you figure out what kind of oil you need, the next step is to go out and buy some. This car calls for a little over four quarts, but you always get more bang for your buck if you buy five, and then you have leftover oil for the next oil change. So we ran out and got ourselves some Mobile One. And the weight's right here, OW20, which is exactly what we need from Lexus. This thing even says on here, advanced fuel economy, recommended for most Hondas and Toyotas, which of course Lexus is made by Toyota. This is really a Prius with a Lexus badge on it. Then run out and get yourself an oil filter. So I picked this one over up at O'Reilly's because they carry Wicks, which are awesome oil filters. They're cheap, I think it was seven bucks. That oil was 25. So right now we're into this for $32. Not a bad deal at all. Plus we get to work on our own car. How fun is that? So before we change our oil, let's check to see what it looks like right now. And let's see what the level is. So the dipstick, you're on a tripod, so it's kind of hard to show you, but as you lean forward, so the dipstick on this car is right here. They're almost always yellow, easy to find. So we got those two holes signify low and high. So we want to make sure that we're below this one, but we're over this one. First of all, this color is fantastic. I mean, this, this car only has 35,000 miles on it, but I mean, look at that golden color. That's great. That's what it's supposed to look like. If your oil's black, you either have a Ford <laughs> or you have some engine problems. <laughs> All right, so we went ahead and figured out what kind of oil to get. We know how much to get. A good way, a good rule of thumb to know how much oil to get is to know how many cylinders your engine is. This is a four cylinder car, it's gonna need four quarts. If it's a six cylinder car, it needs six quarts. If it's an eight cylinder car, I've never had one, I'm assuming it's eight. The bigger the engine, the more oil it needs. I mean, it just makes sense, right? So let's get underneath this car and start draining the oil. Okay, so here we are underneath the car. 
Um, I'm just squeezed under here. Unlike a normal car, this Lexus has a skid plate that's plastic and goes like underneath the entire engine. It's super annoying. So in order to get to the oil filter and to the drain plug, you have to remove a small little section of the skid plate, which is right above you. So here, take a look. This guy here has got to come down. So it's got some screws. It's got like three screws and this thing backs out or something like that. I can't remember. But uh, they're 10 millimeter or you can use the Phillips head. Whenever you're doing something like this, it's always best, always best to use a socket because you will easily strip out those Phillips head screws. My wife has a knack for finding cars that have difficult oil changes. And this car has the most annoying oil change I've ever dealt with. Oh, Lexus. This is what you get when you buy a Lexus. You get extra plastic. This is, this is the bonus. <laughs> because my XV, you could just go underneath that thing, drain the oil in two seconds. All right, so that thing's off. Keep our screws with the stupid cover. Okay, so what we're looking at, oil pan, drain plug, and this is the oil filter inside of this stupid plastic case here, which you need a special you have to have a special tool to get this off. Once again, Lexus. Any other car, well, I shouldn't say that, but most normal cars, you don't need a special tool. You can just get this thing off of here. But this car, you got to have a special tool. So let me show you what the tool is. Um, but first, we're going to notice here that this thing is nice and dry. This is exactly how it's supposed to look. It looks brand new. This car's got 35,000 miles on it. It's a 2014. It looks absolutely beautiful and this is how your car should look if it doesn't look this way you have a leak somewhere where someone's not maintaining this properly so if it's your car you should maintain it if you're paying somebody to do it there should not be crap all over this it should be nice and clean just like this is so let's go ahead and get a 14 millimeter socket because that's how big this is and we'll get our drain plug or our drain pan and start draining this oil out of here here's the oil pan Scoot it underneath there. All right, so we're back underneath. We got our pan, and we got our tools. So when you go to remove, when you go to remove this guy, you want to use a box wrench like this, or you want to use a socket like this guy. And you can see this guy here is a, what is it, six point? Six point socket. Which means that when it slips over the nut, it's going to have the most amount of leverage. Okay? So, if you just got back from the dealership, or the last oil change was done by the dealership, I don't know what they do there. They use like an impact wrench or something like that to put these, put these on. These really don't need to be on all that tight. But for whatever reason, whether it's a brand new car or you got your oil changed somewhere else, they love to hammer on these things. So, you might want to start off with something like this. Put it on and give it a push. Let's see how tight it is. I'm the one who did it last time. Nope, oh, see? See, that wasn't hard at all. And now that's loose. One thing you never, ever want to use is this side. Because you have the least amount of leverage. And what can happen is, is you can, as you push, it'll kind of do one of these guys, as you can see and then it'll slip and what will happen is it'll start to round off the edges of your drain bolt and then you're gonna have trouble going forward on replacing this but they're very inexpensive to replace and you can get them that are magnetic I don't think this one is on this car because I haven't changed it out but it's a uh, it's a good thing to have alright All right, and then just with our hand you really should have a rag on standby because oil is gonna pour out plus there's a washer here I don't know if you can see it. I like them both to come out together if I can, but that one's kind of stuck on there. I keep pressure on it, pushing up as I re as I unwind this, unscrew it. And then, well, that didn't work out the way it normally works, but you get the idea. Look how clean that oil is. 5,000 miles. It's amazing. So we're going to let that drain.
And then we'll go ahead and tackle the oil filter. Okay, so while the oil is draining out of that car, let me show you some differences in oil filters. So this is the oil filter that is for this Lexus. And this is another thing you get when you have a Lexus, is you get an oil filter that looks like this. It's a filter. Um, you get a little rubber replacement gasket, and you have some extra work to do when you change your oil as a result. A normal car, like this Prelude, that's what you get. Just nice replaceable canister. The filter element is inside this metal canister. It's not accessible. This thing just screws onto the block. Super easy, no special tools. This guy, and I'm gonna to have to show you once I get once we get underneath the car, but this guy, you have to have this. And good luck finding it at O'Reilly's or Advanced Auto or any of those places. I got this off Amazon, I think it was $25. Um, it fits perfectly over that canister. Essentially, it fits over like this. These little cutouts are what make it unique. The metal canister on that has has unique cutouts that these fit around. So this is necessary to do the oil change on the CT200. If you had a normal Japanese car like this one over here, you wouldn't need a tool. And if you did need a tool, it would be something silly like this that I can go buy anywhere, which doesn't happen to fit this filter. But you get my point. I mean, this thing is like, I can go buy this at Walmart anywhere I want. Maybe this one will fit. That one doesn't fit either. But these are just normal, cheesy little things. You typically don't need them, really. Um, a good grip. You can just unscrew it. But anyway, I just wanted to show you the difference between oil filters. So when you buy your next car, you may want to ask, what kind of oil filter does it come with? Because these are the way to go, man. They're so easy. This oil has been draining for like 15 or 20 minutes. You can see we got a slow drip right now. Um, and that's pretty good to me. You don't want to drain your oil like in five minutes, like these five minute oil changes, and then throw the cap in there and dump some oil in and run out the door. You want all the oil out of the car. The only way to do that is to let it drain. So you have to give it time. So I'm going to give this a little wipe. Maybe that little gasket wants to come loose, but I guess it doesn't. It seems really happy there. I'm not going to replace it. I know there's some people watching that will probably freak out because I'm not going to replace that. But in my experience, if it's not leaking, which this one wasn't, you remember what it looked like, right? If it's not really leaking, then you don't need to replace it every single time. I do mine probably every three oil changes. Sometimes I even just flip it over. So, that's hand tight on there now. Nothing's going to drip. So we can move the, the drain, rotate this thing out of the way a little bit. But I really want you to kind of see what's going on here with the oil filter. So here is the uh, oil filter canister. We have to take this plastic cap off to have access to the filter element. So again, this thing is going to rotate off. But you see these plastic stupid nubs on here? And there's like a metal tab there. And if I rotate my hand around it, there's another nub up here. You have to have this stupid thing here in order to make this work. This fits over here. Some kind of way. Ta-da! You can see how it's nice and flush. So now we're going to take our socket wrench. I'm going to throw it on here. And we're going to give it a twist. It doesn't take this long when you're not filming. So, <laughs> just an FYI, in case you're like, I don't have four hours doing oil change. <laughs> it's usually like a 30 minute job. But, you know, YouTube life. You can wear rubber gloves if you want. Make this part easier, I guess. There we go, start to come loose now. This is what I like to do. I give it a little spin and let it run out. Spin. This way I don't just pull it all off and it collapses everywhere because then I gotta clean it all up. All right, so a lot of oil's poured out of there. This guy's ready to, I've loosened it enough where it's ready to come out. See, if you're really good, like me, you don't get any oil on your hands. And you can see that filter in there. That's what we're replacing. 
Sometimes they fall out. Let's see if it'll kinda. There we go. Thump. All right. We got a little a rubber gasket to replace, and then stick that oil filter uh, element in here. So let's do it. All right. So here we are with our over-engineered Lexus oil filter cover, and there's a gasket right here that we need to get off. And the easiest way that I know how to do it is I thought there was a spot for your screwdriver, but anyway. Screwdriver under there, pry up, and then with your thumb, get rid of that guy. In the box, we got our filter. Drops down in there like that. Simple enough. And then we got our gasket. So, this one's performance. That's why it's green. I'm just kidding. It's just a regular old gasket. All right, all set, ready to go back in the car. All right, so the oil has stopped draining. Look at that. Got a little wipe around that opening. And look how nice and clean everything is. This is how it's supposed to always be. If yours isn't like this, your mechanic, or your oil change place, or you, are doing something wrong. That thing looks spotless. So now we're going to take this guy and just throw him on here. Start screwing it into place. You can feel it get tight. That's it. Remember, you never want to crank on this stuff too hard because you are going to be the one loosening it, right? So, get it on there, but don't. It doesn't need to be wailed on there. So, this guy's only hand tight, so we're going to tighten it up. And again, same thing with this. You can easily strip these bolts on these oil pans. Super easy. So, you want to give it that much <laughs> snug and a bump or go get yourself a torque wrench and follow the specs on uh, you know what Lexus recommends if you so so wish but I never have a problem so now we gotta put this stupid cover back on and uh, we'll be good to go so everything's closed up below we tightened down our oil drain plug super tight we tightened our oil filter and changed our oil filter everything there is nice and tight Everything is cleaned up, and that stupid plastic drop-down access compartment deal is all back under there, fastened nice and neat. So the last thing we're going to do is actually put oil in our car. We've already removed this guy. So you might want to set them. Sometimes people set it here or here. The last thing you want is this thing to fall in your engine compartment. So I just put it totally outside of the engine bay. So put that guy somewhere else. And now we're gonna grab our oil. Get yourself a clean funnel so you don't make a mess. You don't have to use Mobile One. You can use any oil you want. Should definitely be synthetic, but I'm not gonna tell you what kind of oil to use. You wanna argue about oil, there's a website called Bob's the Oil Guy go on there you can learn more about oil than you will ever need to know let me just pull this piece of crap off here all right so we know this takes four quarts or somewhere about there and we know this is five quarts so we're going to pour in almost all of it you never want to overfill your um engine but a little more isn't going to kill anything but you really want to be between you really want to be between the high and low line. Let's see where we're at. Clean oil is really hard to read on these dipsticks. Can you see that? <laughs> it's really hard to see. Let's give it a wipe and see if we can let's see if we can get an accurate reading. You see that line? 
it's really hard to see but it's like I think it needs a little bit more to me it looks like it's right there it's really hard to see so we'll add a little bit more which would make sense we need to be a four four quarts Right? I'm right about there. I could put this on the ground and look at it too, but it's the same. All right, we got our four quarts of oil in the car. We got our cap on tight. Everything's good below. There's, there's still one more step we have to do. We have to go inside and reset the engine diagnostic code thing, whatever, that tells us that we need maintenance, and reset it so that it knows to tell us 5,000 miles from now that we need a new oil change. All right, guys, we're back where we started inside the car. One last thing to do, and that is to reset the maintenance required light on this Lexus CT200. So, of course, it's a freaking process. In my XB, it's like two seconds done. In this car, it's like, oh, pat your belly, rub your head, hop on one foot, scratch your back, and then do a 360, and then it's done. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, let's see. After watching a YouTube video, let's see if I can do it. I, I do it every time, but I, I forget every time because it's so freaking complicated. So let's see if we can do it. First thing we're going to do is with our foot off of the brake, we are going to press the power button. It's supposed to illuminate everything. It doesn't. You got to hit it again. All right. So down there, Lexus hybrid drive, maintenance required. We need to see trip A. We see trip A. We hit this again. Turns everything off. That says odometer. We are going to hold down this button and then hit the power button. I guess we got to hit it twice. Still holding that down, resetting maintenance data. You see the little countdown there, it dashes, all zeros. We're good to go. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm telling you, if you can change the oil in this car, you can change the oil on any car. This is the most complicated, silly, ridiculous oil change you can imagine but whatever it's done i hope you enjoyed this video once again if you do please hit the like button please subscribe changing your oil is awesome this is how you get up close and personal with your cars your car should not just be something that gets you from point a to point b if it is you're really boring your car should be an extension of you an extension of your personality something that you get to really know and the way you get to really know it is by working on it so before you can start pulling the engine out of a car, you gotta take baby steps to get there. And changing your oil is the perfect baby step to learn how to work on a car. It has everything. You're crammed underneath the car. There's danger involved. You're gonna get your hands dirty. And you're gonna come across like something that's a pain in the butt. So that's what working on a car is all about. All those things I just named happen all the time for everything, whether you're changing your spark plugs, your brake pads, or installing a supercharger. All those things always happen. So use these little successes, like changing your oil, to build off of the, so your confidence can go up, so you can start taking on bigger challenges. That's what Extreme Daily Drivers is all about. This is not supposed to be some mechanic working on his car, showing you the rights and wrongs and how to do everything. This is a guy who doesn't know crap about anything, working on his car and making it happen. So if I can do it, you can do it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time.